this next bout at the junior welterweight level, scheduled for four rounds, that is Steve Ellis Moore. He hails from Orange, New Jersey. Moore taking on South Boston's own Joe Farina. He's 2-0 with two knockouts. Accompanied to the ring by his trainer, John Curran. Current 76 years old, but doesn't look a day over 21. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to that, in uh, in Farina's corner, uh, Eddie Ruiz. That's the brother of uh, ex heavyweight champion John Ruiz. That's right, the quiet man. That's right. Two time heavyweight champion, first Latino boxer to win a heavyweight title. So he's got some history alongside. Time for the tail of the tape now. Joe Farina coming in here, South Boston. 27 years old, couple of wins, two KOs, weighing 150 pounds. Steve Moore at 37, looking to come back to his winning ways from Orange, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mohegan Sun Arena, we are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Sponsored by Montauk Ice Tea, Modell Sporting Goods, you gotta go to Moe's, and Mohegan Sun. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside, Don Ackerman, Peter Harry, and Steve Weisfeld. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring will be Danny Schiavone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the junior middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears black with the red stripe. He weighed in at 149 pounds. His professional record, one victory against three defeats. He has one win coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Orange, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Illis Moore. Moore. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He was black with the gold stripe. He scaled at a ready and even 150 pounds. His young professional record thus far perfect. Two fights, two victories, both of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of and proudly representing South Boston, Massachusetts, introducing Joe Farina. Farina. Fellas, we over the rules in the dress room. Let's make sure obey my commands at all times. Keep the belt clean. Touch them up. Go back to the corners, your luck. All right, the two men got the final instructions. Farina looks ready to go. Moore looks like he's ready for the challenge as well. This one's scheduled for four rounds, and there's the opening bell. Farina, another left-hander. Oh, wow. Oh, short Very right hand surprising. and an early knockdown. That's that lead right hand. Lead right hand from Steve Moore. Come right down the pike and caught Joe Farina cold. We talked about cold. Farina looks like he hasn't even lathered up a sweat yet. Right now, Joe Farina needs to run down the intensity and not let Steve Moore get off more than a few punches. Catches him with a nice left hook to the body, but Farina, knowing he has to answer. Farina got stunned with another jab on the way in by me. Farina now looking to move his head on the way in. Farina from South Boston, born and raised, still lives in Southie. Owns two properties there. Price of real estate is sky high in Southie, as we know. And he said they're not pricing me out. <laughs> and he's not cutting it short with the action here. He's looking, to, he's looking to move forward here and press the action. Trying to find his range. Uh, nice right hook nice to the body, body shot yes. for Reno. Sweeping left hook. 
Joe just looking to get his sea legs underneath him. Oh, uh, sleeping right hand from Farina. Goes back in with one. Has more against the ropes. As Farina varies his punches to the head and the body, he's going to connect. Joe's got really solid power. As de demonstrated with his two knockouts in his first two professional fights. Joe looking for his offense now. And you can see Joe when, when he's uh, right above us now. Joe's looking to uh, looking to pick his spots. Not looking to throw wild punches. Just look to find find the right position. I like how he handles that. Uh, how he holds his left hand very close to his cheek, just to make sure that those counter right hands don't get in again. See that left? Yeah, he's staying protected for sure. Not going to hit with, be hit with that oh. shot again. Catches him with the left hand. Wobbles more. Has him in the corner. See, now this is a tough round to go 10-8 uh, because Farina did establish all of the action since the knockdown. No question about that. Controlling the fight with 16 seconds to go in round one. Hits him uh, with a beautiful right hook to the body. That right hook is going to start. Those right hooks are going to start wearing down Steve Moore as this fight goes on. Nice work from both gentlemen to end round one. Moore got the knockdown. But Farina bounced back. But Moore caught him early, literally <laughs> walking into it. <laughs> it's about, about seven, seven, eight seconds into this fight. That straight right hand goes right down the middle, and that's classic medicine for a for right-hander against the uh, against the lefty. But Farina, he started to come on strong towards the end of that round. Caught him with some beautiful shots, including this one. That was a nice, a short right hook to the body. Those are the shots that open up the big ones at the end. This hard left hand is going to be landed by Joe Farina coming up. Almost that, floored more. If it weren't for the, it weren't for the ring ropes, and I think more might have gone down. Farina got his instructions from his trainer John Curran. 76 years old. He'll be 77 on August 29th of this year. John Kearns, a solid, solid trainer. has been around forever. That's and, right. Uh, really nice guy. Trained Canadian Boxing Hall of Famer Jacques LeBlanc, who fought Roberto Duran. He fought Dangerous Dan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> nice body shot by Farina. He's starting to find a home for it. He's in the pocket now. Farina, Farina now over the, over the past... Uh, Short while here, keeping more against the ropes, pinning there and just teeing off on him. Broken up now by Danny Schiavone once more. Farina started boxing around the age of 12 or 13, put together a nice amateur record, 38 and 9. But now he's a professional. These are hard shots on the inside by Joe Farina. And Moore is definitely starting to wear down as you can see him getting pinned on the ropes and he stays there. That's right, Moore can feel these shots. Ah, you can see those. Guys, see right in front of us, you can hear the punishing right shots. And that right hook is doing some damage. I think I really like, I really like Arena how Arena looks forward again. Arena keeps that left hand, is pinned to his face. He's not going to get hit with another one of those right hands. Technically sound, Joe Farina. Looking for another heavy blow to land. Broken up again by referee Schiavone. Farina doing the much better work on the inside. Nice short body shot by Moore that connects as Farina comes in. Farina's able to get underneath a couple of those more right hands. There he goes over the top and he gets back to the body. He's searching for a big shot here. Connects with the left, goes back to the body with the right hand. Has him on top. You can see Moore is significantly wearing down on the Left now. hand, he felt that. Farina's just teeing off with the right hook. Farina, teeing off, off, right. off with the yeah. left hand. Yeah. 
Right hook by Farina. You can see Farina now just pounding away from ring, side of the ring to side of the ring. Having a lot of success in this fight receiver. He's controlling this second round, considering the knockdown that Moore scored in round one with five seconds to go now. I think this round goes to Joe Farina. Joe Farina continuing to get instructions from his trainer, John Curran, Eddie Ruiz, the brother to John Ruiz, two-time heavyweight champion, as you mentioned, Dana. Joe Farina looks pretty good right now. Steve Moore trying to get some instructions. His corner telling him to get back to boxing. Kind of lost some of that when you get hit with some heavy shots. You know what? When you're taking all those punches, it's kind of hard. It looked like he wanted to do a single leg takedown. Yeah. <laughs> the wrestling background. That's right. He is an athlete. Yep. Played hockey and football growing up in Southie. Farina is all warmed up. Good left hand there from Farina. Comes back with another. Farina showing his uh, his work ethic right here in this fight. Staying busy, staying all over Steve Moore. He's got the work ethic. Works on the commuter rail. He says he wakes up in the morning, he goes for a run, goes to work all day, and then goes to a gym. That's right. I told you about those two homes that he owns in Southie. From 21 to 24 years old, he worked every day, saved every check, so he can buy property over there. He's done well. He's a smart kid. Had three amateur fights during that span. But he said he's ready to go in, in shape. The hard part is over, and now he's in a fight with Steve Moore in the corner doing some work. Farina fighting, fighting this fight on the inside. Moore getting kind of sloppy as he gets tired. Guys got to watch out for their heads. That's what referee Shavoni says. This is this is where the headbutts come, especially when you got uh, the self part there against the right hand. Farina nice body shot from Farina. Those are the kind of punches that are going to get Steve Moore out of here. He's leaning on him on the ropes. Farina, you like to see that. Not afraid to mix it up. Nice left guys, hand connects. A lot of misses guys, with another. A lot of guys young in their careers are not uh, so eager to fight on the inside. Farina welcomes it. Yeah, he doesn't shy away from fighting inside the pocket. Goes back inside again. Hits him with some more body shots. Before being broken up again by referee Schiavone. Farina in control of this fight 100% right now. Needs to get a little bit more distance. A little bit more distance so he can get off with that home run punch. Mm -hmm. He's trying to just work it from the inside right now. And it's in the short uppercuts with both hands. That's right. Steve Moore tried to step around him, but couldn't get it done before Danny Schiavone stepped in once more. Back on the ropes they go. Here comes Joe Farina. Ten seconds to go here in round three. Joe Farina and Steve Moore. Three rounds now in the books. Fourth and final round, three minutes to go here for Joe Farina and Steve Moore. Left hand by Farina. Two men trading shots. Danny Schiavone lets him fight. They're on the ropes right in front of us. Farina wants some pressure, press at this point to try to uh, try to get that knockout. Keep his knockout streak alive. He's in with another tough fighter, Steve Moore's game. Good left hand by Farina. 
Nice short uppercut. Moore yeah, tries to answer. After that knockdown in the first five seconds of this fight, uh, Steve Moore has spent, spent most of the time with his back against the ropes. Farina's been the aggressor all throughout landing the harder punches to the body and the head, basically controlling the distance and controlling the fight. Ever since that first round, it almost seems to have awakened Joe Farina. Once he got some sweat and lathered up, he was ready. He's getting off again. Moore looking for some body work. Landed a couple good ones. But Farina gets him back against the ropes, controlling this man. I think Joe Farina may be more comfortable on the inside than the outside. No question about that. That's where he's been most of the fight, as he has a left hand hitting down on Steve Moore. That, that, that nice short, right uppercut. Yeah, those right uppercuts, they hurt. Looks like that's the second one he got for an elbow is Steve Moore. Moore right Moore, here. Moore getting off a couple of good shots at the end here. He's game. Oh, tries for another. But Farina blocks the right hand. Blocks the right hand, rolls with it. I think he's more comfortable absorbing those punches on the inside. Both fighters look to be a bit tired at this point. Farina looks a little bit gassed. 30 seconds to go here in the fourth and final round. Joe Farina comes in undefeated, 2-0 with two knockouts. Inserts of maybe a third. Steve Moore knocked him down in round one. Since then, it's been Joe Farina's fight. It's been all Joe Farina since that point, without a doubt. Farina's looking to make, looking 10 to make seconds an impact to go. Here. Both guys. Boy. Letting the hands go. Steve Moore bringing it on. Steve Moore not going without a fight. Excellent bout. Four Solid rounds action. of action. Joe Farina, Steve Moore go the distance. Solid action in this fight. You know, uh, Jemai, when, when you have a knockdown in a four-round fight, kind of makes it difficult to score. And it makes it difficult for for there to be a, a clear-cut winner with that knockdown, because even though Farina did take the the last, well, the, the, at least the middle two rounds, round set, round two and round uh -huh. three, four was very close. If Moore wins four, this bout could be a draw. Put some pressure on him for sure. He didn't even seem to have worked up a lather before he found himself on the canvas. As a result of that, he got up and he went to work. Good for Joe. Uh, Joe Freeney did, did a good job here. Boy, we know he's a hard worker working on that commuter rail. Absolutely. <laughs> 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. He said he went to work. This is easy. <laughs> Farina showing towards the cameras. Marina just commenting to his trainer that he might have gotten a point back, meaning that uh, typically when there's a knockdown, it's a 10 8 round. But uh, in the case where he says he may have gotten a point back, it's just where, whereas Farina controlled the second portion of the first round, he may have uh, he may have made it a 10 9 round and not lost two points. I'm inclined to believe him. That's what I it looked so. like from my seat. I think so too. Let's take a look back at some of this action. Here's the round one knockdown from Steve Moore. Five seconds into this fight, Joe Farina, the young favorite from South Boston, finds himself on his butt. But then he began to take control. As he said to his trainer, he might have gotten a point back in that round one, and then in round two, he really started to put the pressure on. Here we take a look at that flurry right at the end of this fight. Steve Moore might have come up on the, on the, on the right side of this flurry, going to work with the body shots and the right hand flurry. A lot of shots connecting. They really did. If I'm Moore's trainer, you probably wish he would have done more of that, maybe in round two <laughs> and three. Steve Moore may have done do a little bit more. All right, David Diamante with the official decision right now. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here at the Mohegan Sun Arena, we go to the judges' scorecards, and they read as follows. Steve Weisfeld, 38-37 for Farina. Peter Harry, 38-37 for more.
Don Ackerman scored this contest 38-37 for your winner by split decision. And still undefeated, Joe Farina. Very close decision there, split decision. You, uh, you know what, it was all about the knockdown. All about the knockdown. And uh, if, if, if uh, Farina doesn't come back and make that 10-8 that round 10-9, uh, you know, he could have lost this fight, or this fight could have most likely would have been a draw. Absolutely, because anytime you get that knockdown, you score that big 10-8 round potentially. But Farina was game, knew that he needed to at least get a point back. He couldn't have gone down two. You saw it 38-37 would have been a difference between a draw. That's it. Just right, right there would have made it a draw. Farina, Farina did a good job, really good job by coming back. Uh, noticing that he had to act, yep. and he had to act quickly, and he went right to work. But I'll tell you this, and uh, praise to Joe Farina. He came back, and when he came back, he came back with his left hand glued to his cheek. So he didn't want to get hit with that, that right hand again, didn't want to get hit with the coming down of fight, so he could have just shifted and moved and blocked that, that, that right hand. More comfortable on the inside. Typically, when a fighter's more comfortable about fighting on the inside, they need to keep their hands really high so as to be able to block some of those inside shots or the longer shots straight down the middle. Farina did a very good job. Hats off to him. Great defense by him, especially being a younger fighter coming up in his career. Very heads up as well.